Motor Week is made possible by TireRack.com and RockAuto.com. In today's inflationary world, even the most mundane cars cost over 10 grand. And if you want something more exciting, you have to shell out two or three times that amount. So here at Motor Week, we like to ferret out those unique vehicles that don't carry astronomical price tags. And that's what we've got for you this week, the Lancia Zagato, an Italian thoroughbred that promises the best in sports car tradition and almost true convertible style for around $14,000. Lancia, or Lancia, as many Americans still call it, is one of the oldest and proudest competition car makers in Europe. But so far, it's never been able to make much of a sales dent in the American market. Lancia was taken over by Fiat some years ago. With only 300 units a year, the Zagato represents their latest attempt at making a very small mark in the imported sports car field. With those kinds of sales numbers, it makes sense that Fiat wouldn't put many lira into styling changes. One of the results of that frugality, round headlights that tend to date the overall handsome exterior. But what makes the Zagato different is its Targa-style roof. That means a rigid roll bar-like roof band with a solid removable panel in front and a soft convertible back panel. The advantage of this open-air style is both increased rollover safety and ease of removal. It takes only a few seconds to unlatch the four retaining latches on the roof panel. It then stores neatly in the trunk, taking up most of the normal luggage space. The soft top has two latches and folds flat, with a traditional convertible tonneau cover for appearance. This is what's underneath the target top, an attractive 2 plus 2 interior where the back seat is only usable for children or that luggage you couldn't store in the trunk. If you've got short legs and long arms, you'll find the traditional Italian driving position just about right. The Italians have made things better for most American drivers with reclining backrest and an adjustable steering wheel. But bowed legs can get tiring after only a few miles. The dash is sculptured in an all-black Art Deco style with every switch convenient and all gauges present and readable. Space is also at a premium under the front opening hood. The Zagato has one of the most cramped front-wheel drive engine compartments we've ever seen. The massive and securely attached air cleaner blocks the plugs and wires. And the optional air conditioning will make even changing the oil a lot more than routine. While the Zagato gets a lot of stares for its looks, the best treat for the driver is the way it handles. Over our low-speed slalom course, the Lancia rewarded our best efforts with flat cornering, fast steering, and only modest amounts of understeer. Since the Lancia is front drive, that is significant. It helps that Pirelli P6 high-performance tires come standard. Entering the course at 35, most drivers were able to exit comfortably at just under 50. Even in our higher speed emergency lane changing maneuver, all we found was great fun. Even though there's little weight over the rear wheels, maintaining control was near effortless. About the only handling characteristic we found that wasn't above average was the curb-to-curb -curb turning diameter. At 34 feet, however, it's just slightly wider than tight. On the other hand, you can't have everything. Witness our acceleration test. The Zagato's two-liter engine exhibited typical four-cylinder low-end performance. Over our 500-foot course, the longest time was 9.9 .9 seconds to make 58 miles per hour. The Lancia's five-speed manual gearbox, and it needs all of them, is definitely meant for an initial burst of speed. Again, times were longer than we'd like over the quarter mile, 19.2 seconds, though ending speeds were acceptable at 78 miles per hour. But where it counts for most of us is in highway passing. From 40 to 55, the Zagato came through. 4.9 seconds in third gear. You should have little trouble getting out of tight situations. You're also likely to feel secure when it comes to stopping. Even with a lot of squeal, the four-wheel disc brakes pulled the 2,760-pound Zagato down from 30 miles per hour in just 26 feet, extremely short with no pull nor fade. And from 55 miles per hour, the Lancia scored a first. 
In panic situations, the average braking distance was 96 feet. That makes it the first test car to break the 100-foot mark. Stops were secure with only minimal fade, though harder pedal pressure was needed towards the end of the trial. In addition, there was no tendency for the rear end to swing wide, a frequent trait of front-wheel drive cars. My overall driving impressions must include these notes. The target top arrangement and small rear window do make for a large rear blind spot. However, unlike most convertibles, there were no rattles, and with the top up, we got a reasonable sound level reading of 73 decibels at 55. Wind noise was minimal, and despite being driven in the rain, there were no leaks. Fuel economy does suffer slightly at the expense of a sporty nature. The EPA rates the Lancia Zagato at 19 City 27 Highway, below many less spirited competitors. But to our delight, in our testing, we averaged a very respectable 26 miles per gallon. So for the price, we can think of no other car that combines the pleasures of an open-air sports car with the obvious attempts at providing increased safety, superb handling, great brakes, modest power, and affordable mileage. In our minds, that makes the Lancia Zagato a unique, fun-filled automotive bargain.